Hello everybody, welcome to this PC Computer Guy Tech Talk. My name is Nick Ellis. I am the PC Computer Guy. You can find me on the web www.pccomputerguy.com for this tech tip, many other podcasts, articles, and so much more. Today we're going to be talking about IMAP Mail versus Pop Mail. A lot of people have heard of Pop Mail. That might sound familiar to you, but IMAP might sound a little bit different. Um, Pop Mail is an old system that is decent, but is not, it was not designed in the days of multiple devices where things needed to be synchronized. Today, we live in a world where we have multiple devices and we want them to synchronize with each other. Synchronize meaning if I delete a message from computer here, it's gone from here and it's gone from here. Or if I delete a message from my phone, it's gone from here and it's gone from here. Or if I move a message to a folder on my phone, it's moved to that folder here and here. IMAP is designed to allow that synchronization to take place. With pop mail, you might have things that are similar, but issues like um, discrepancies where you get a message here and you get a message here, but you don't get it here can sometimes happen. And if you get the message in all three places, once you delete it from here, you'll notice that you'll still find it here and here. So you have to delete it here and here. Or sometimes um, the these two might get the message and this one won't. There's just a lot of crazy different things that can happen. Um, the way that pop mail is designed is that the computer goes to the server, generally speaking, and gets the messages and downloads them into the system itself, taking them off of the server so that these other guys can't get to it. There's little ways around that, such as setting the uh, delete time for 10 days or something before removing it from the server. But if you forget to do that on this computer, then you're going to have that problem again. With IMAP, everything stays on the server and everything is done or interacted with on the server. That way, whatever happens here, is reflected here and here and vice versa. The benefits to IMAP are that one, very importantly, all of your email is stored on the server, which means that if your computer crashes, you won't lose your email. You might lose your contacts and you might lose your calendar, but you're not going to lose the email itself. Two, the messages obviously are all synchronized with each other on here, so that's very beneficial for me. Those are the primary things. There are other advantages to IMAP, but those are the primary things. The drawback is IMAP tends to be a little bit slower than other systems because you are depending on the server for everything. So when you click on your inbox or you clicked on your sent items folder, you might have to wait a few seconds for things to update. Um, just depends on the speed of the server. And uh, the other drawback is since everything is stored on the server, you have to be careful with how much stuff you keep on the server. Pretty much every server has a limit and those limits vary depending on what system you're using, but every server has a limit as to how much email you can store. Now in this day and age, the limits are pretty high, probably the smallest being two gig, average five, 10 gig, maybe even a little bit more than that, which is a lot of email. But if you exceed those limits, then you're gonna have to go through and clean your inbox out. Um, quite honestly, that would be thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of messages that you would have to have on your computer to use up that entire uh, allotment of space. Um, but there's ways to fix that as well. For example, you can move the messages from IMAP to a folder on your computer and save them locally if that's something that comes into play. That's out of the scope of this thing. So IMAP is used for synchronizing your mail system. Now, if you use webmail, by the way, this is really not for you. If you use webmail, meaning, for example, you go to AOL.com to check your messages rather than using Outlook or Windows Live Mail or whatever other mail program you use, your phone, then this, this really doesn't help you out. But if you're using Outlook or any kind of mail client, this is for you. So webmail users, if you go to comcast.net to check your email or yahoo.com to check your email, this really doesn't apply to you. Um, so how to set up IMAP. The first thing you need to do is you need to get the information for your system. What is the information for your system? Well, obviously it's gonna be different for every system. And when I say system, I mean email provider. Up here, for example, I have uh, AOL settings right here. AOL IMAP server address is imap.aol.com. Your screen name, your username right here, your IMAP username is the full screen name. So for example, it's me at aol.com. Your IMAP password is your AOL password. Your IMAP port is 993 and then required SSL yes. And then for the SMTP settings. So this right here, this is all the incoming settings for you to receive messages. This right here is for you to send the messages. So it gives you the same information right here, smtp.aol.com, your full me at aol.com, your password, your port, or an alternate port, and SSL required yes. Don't freak out, I'm gonna show you where to type in all these pieces of information. Really, it's just incoming address, incoming port, outgoing address, 
outgoing port, um, and then your email address and password. That's pretty much what it boils down to. So where do I receive messages on? Where do I send them on? And my username and password to allow me to send and receive messages. Um, and then the SSL is nice in terms of security. It provides a very good layer of security. So some systems, such as Bluehost here, don't require SSL necessarily. But if you're given the choice between SSL and non-SSL, definitely use the SSL so that you can protect yourself from um, people trying to sniff out your information on the internet. So Bluehost right here, here's the information on Bluehost. Um, your incoming mail server is, or your incoming username is your full email address. So username at example.com, incoming mail server, mail.yourdomain.com, outgoing mail.yourdomain.com, and then depending on what system you use, we'll click Outlook here. They give you more detailed information. They actually give you step-by-step -step pictures. Um, you select this to IMAP, and then here's your incoming mail, your outgoing mail, your username, your password. Then you're going to have to click this button that says More Settings. I'm going to show you all of this stuff. You're going to have to check this box. This is to prevent spam messages. Um, and then here's where that port is. So you had the incoming, and then you had the port, the outgoing, and then the port. And then you notice it says None. And then it gives you the option. If you want to use SSL, change it to 993, and this has to change to SSL. And for this one, 465 and SSL. Otherwise, your messages are not encrypted between your computer and Bluehost, which means that somebody could potentially get your information. So don't freak out. Again, just a couple pieces of basic information, incoming server, outgoing server, and these won't always be the same. So don't get confused by that. For example, in the AOL, there were two different things. Then your username and password, and then outgoing and the two ports if you're using SSL. So let's run through it and we'll set up um, my test server that I have here. And um, so what I'm going to do is go to file, accounts, account, new email account. And then for the name, I'm going to type in just Nick. I can type in whatever I want. Nick, Nick Ellis, doesn't matter. My email address password. I'm going to hit this manual server settings right here. Internet email. And then this right here, I want it to say IMAP. That's the important key right there. Make sure you change that to IMAP. And then for my server, it is this information. And then my username is going to be my full email address. And my password and then remember we need to do that more settings outgoing server requires authentication almost always the case and then under advanced I want to use SSL and notice it automatically changed to 995 and then here I'm gonna put it on auto and change it to 465 you'll probably use SSL I hit OK then I hit the test account settings You'll probably get a message like this saying that uh, it's basically a security thing. Go ahead and say yes. Incoming past, outgoing past, close, and we can complete our setup here. Once I complete the setup, notice this guy popped up down here. And if I click my inbox, look at this. All these messages are popping in here right away. These are all the messages that are stored on the account on the server. If I click, you've seen me set this up right now. I have not sent a single message from this computer. But if I click the sent items, look, all of the sent items are here as well. That's because I have used this account before on another computer. And therefore, since it synchronizes everything, you see all of the same stuff. There's a little caveat to that. Uh, you know, let's just talk about it now. After you have seen your messages come in like this, you have to go back and change one thing. And you can't do it before. You have to do it after you see the stuff come in. By default, Outlook wants to save its sent items right here. But this Outlook data file is not on the server. You want it to save in this sent item right here. So you want it to save to a different spot than Outlook is saving it by default. If you don't change it, then the messages won't be synchronized because they will be stored on your computer locally rather than on the server. So you need to tell Outlook to save the messages on the sent items folder in the server. But you have to do that after you have looked at your mail for the first time. So after I've looked at my mail, I'm going to pull back up those options again, account settings. And then I'm going to double click on this guy right here. And under more settings, you see the sent items tab right here. 
it says save sent items to the following server on the folder. And I'm going to make sure that it says sent items right here, not save sent items in the sent items folder on this computer. So we need to make sure that it's saving the sent items to the right area. Otherwise your sent items will not be synchronized and you want to have them synchronized as well. So everything is synchronized and set up here. Now I'm going to set it up on my phone and show you how that works and show you how they're exactly the same. Alrighty, so here we are looking at my trusty phone and I'm going to set up the same settings here. I'm going to select this one, this pop IMAP, put in my email address, my password. Under protocol, I want to make sure that it says IMAP. And please note that this is just from my phone using something called Sense UI. Your phone was probably going to be different, but once you get to the mail settings, you will essentially have somewhere to select IMAP, your email address, your username, your password, your IMAP server, same as your Outlook setup. Remember we did that on Outlook. Okay, and same thing here. And now that I've completed the setup here, you will see all of the same messages that we saw on my Outlook. And so we have this uh, Outlook test message. I'm going to go ahead and delete this guy. And if we go to our inbox over here, you see those Outlook test messages disappeared. If I delete the spam one from here and we refresh the phone here, notice that one is gone. If I delete uh, all of them except the single one on my Outlook here and I refresh my phone here, just that one message is automatically here. So that's the great power of IMAP mail. Things stay synchronized. It makes your life a whole lot easier. Just don't forget to set up your sent folder, both on your phone and on your Outlook setup. So this has been a PC Computer Guy Tech Top. I hope you have enjoyed this. If you found this useful, you can um, visit my website for many more of those, www.pccomputerguide.com. If you need help and they're in the local Indianapolis area, I do on-site appointments, um, or I can do remote access for people that are not in the area. Once again, www.pccomputerguide.com. And until next time, thanks for watching.